13 centimetres is a noisy microwave band if you're in the heart of suburbia. The 2.4 gigahertz band is where Wi-Fi started. And most, if not all connected devices, have the capability of connecting to the Internet of Things via this band. It's this noise that discourages many amateur radio operators from dabbling in 13 centimetres. Recently, amateur radio operators in Sydney decided to move the calling frequency from 2403.1 to 2301.1 in an effort to get away from the noise generated by Wi-Fi. Yeah, fine now, I've got oh, unbelievably bad um Moving 100 megahertz down the band would most certainly improve the possibilities of working more distant stations. But moving down the band raises a conundrum between the old and the new. In locations where noise isn't too much of an issue, 2403.1 will no doubt remain the calling frequency. Also, in Australia, standard licensees do not have access to the small 2 MHz allocation where the new 2301.1 call channel lives, creating a situation that is currently experienced on the 6 metre band. Conundrums aside, if an SG laboratory transverter is at the heart of your 13 centimetre station, then it's possible to extend one of the jumpers used to program the local oscillator frequencies of the transverter to the front panel making it simple to switch between both calling frequencies. If you don't mind changing the frequency on your radio, then no reprogramming of the transverter is required. But if you'd like to keep the radio on the same IF frequency for both call frequencies, then stick around. The SG Laboratory 13 cm transverter is a popular way to get on 2.4 GHz. Its output of around 2 watts is all you need to work the DX if you're in an elevated location. There are four jumpers selectable local oscillator frequencies in the unit. They range from 1870 to 1968 megahertz and they're programmed into non-volatile RAM before it leaves the factory. 1870 megahertz seems to be the lower limit programmable, so let's do the maths here. For 2301.1 megahertz, subtracting 870 megahertz results in 431.1 MHz. Unfortunately, with the default local oscillator frequencies, we can't get 2403.1 to work with 1886, 1888 or 1968 MHz. So 2403.1, the current calling frequency, minus the required IF frequency of the radio, 431.1, equals the required local oscillator frequency of 1972 megahertz. If we switch jumper 2 on and off, then 1972 megahertz needs to be programmed into local oscillator 3. To do that, you'll need a PC with a terminal emulator, and a free program called PuTTY will do the trick. You'll also need a USB to RS-232 
TTL converter module that runs 3.3 volts. These are as cheap as chips and a dime a dozen on eBay. Locate the four header pins for programming on the transverter. With the transverter turned off, connect the TX, RX and ground to the TTL converter. You may need to swap the TX and RX over, turning the connection into a crossover. Having checked the device manager for any issues and to identify the COM port number, launch PuTTY and set the communication parameters to 9600 N81 with no flow control. While you're there, select Terminal and make sure local echo and local line editing are forced on. Start the PuTTY session and power on the transverter. If everything is connected and working correctly, you should see a press any key for programming prompt, followed by decreasing equal signs and a summary of the current state of the transverter. In this case, it's local oscillator 4 with an RX and TX frequency of 1968 MHz. To program local oscillator 3 to 1972 MHz, turn the unit off and on again. While you see the diminishing equal signs, press any key to enter the programming mode. First, you'll see the current RX1 frequency, followed by a prompt to enter a new frequency. If you do nothing, after about eight seconds, you'll see the TX prompt. Now, RX2 and TX2. When you see RX3, enter 1972 and press enter you'll soon see a message showing the new 1972 frequency. Do the same for TX3. Leave TX4 to time out and you'll see the transverter summary to finish off. That's it, programming done. To check your handiwork, reboot the unit and enter the programming mode again. Sit back and watch the results displayed on the screen and make sure they're what you expect. If you find a typo, simply restart the programming sequence and change the frequency accordingly. Cable up an external switch across jumper 2 and changing frequency without touching the radio should be as simple as flicking a switch. Super easy to do, especially if you're out portable. See a square white uh, building right in, uh, in line with uh, where you are there.